Hello, my name is Johannes Almüller. I'm a new curator at the Museo Egizio since January 2020. We are here now in the room that is dedicated to the archaeology and material culture of ancient Nubia, a large region south of uh, Egypt along the River Nile. The main monument behind me is the so-called Elysia Temple. It is a rock hut chapel that was commissioned by Pharaoh Tutmosis III in his 50th year of reign, so around 1420 before Christ. This big temple is maybe a rather uncommon favorite object, but in my case, I'm also not interested in the temple itself, but in the secondary inscriptions and graffiti that can be found on the outer walls and also inside um, of the temple. On the left wall here of the outer forecourt of the Elysia temple, there are three individual um, stela cut into the wall. These stela are accompanied by a number of short hieroglyphic texts. These hieroglyphic texts can be called graffiti since they were made on these man-made cut away uh, rock face by individual people. Unfortunately, due to the weathering of this um, rock face, most of the texts and images um, cannot be properly read. We can still say that all these graffiti there, in most cases, simply state the occupation and the name of the person who made these graffiti there. And the stela show the adoration of the deities that are thought to dwell in the Elysia chapel. We see um, someone who adores these deities in the upper register, in the upper zone of this large stela, for instance. And below them, there is a longer text with a religious um, formula. And at the end of this text, normally comes also the occupation and the name of the person who commissioned the stela. There is one larger graffito in between this larger stela to the right and the other two stela to the left. And this larger graffito can still be read and we read the title Overseer of Priests and Overseer of Craftsmen and the name Bach and Werrell. The most interesting part of the Elysia Chapel in terms of graffiti is this wall that was originally positioned to the right of the entrance of the chapel. Due to space restrictions, it could not be reconstructed in its original or proper location and was thus mounted here to my right, a little bit detached from the original monument. In the upper right, we find a graffito of a temple scribe called Turi. Below there is another graffito of a female temple singer of Horus, of the falcon deity Horus. In this area here, several more graffiti of temple scribes and priests are to be found. There are two rather long and very interesting graffiti here. This one, for instance, mentions another temple scribe, a lecture priest of Horus, the lord of Aniba. And over there in the corner, we have another graffito of a temple scribe and a second priest of Horus, the Lord of Aniba. We also know the names of these people. So this person here is called Bach and Aten, and the one over there is Amenemope. Thanks to their um, Thanks to the fact that they say that they are priests of Horus from Aniba, we also know where they came from, namely from Aniba, from this important um, center in uh, Lower Nubia. 
Up here, there is another very important graffito that um, consists of three individual lines. It was also made by a certain Amenemope. And this Amenemope records his um, career, so to say, in three successive stages. He acted as a letter scribe of the Viceroy Mary Mose. Afterwards, he acted as an overseer of works of another Viceroy called Jehuti Mose. And at the end of his career, he acted as deputy of Kush under a Viceroy Hui. These viceroys were the top administrators of ancient Nubia in pharaonic times. So they were at the top of the social and administrative hierarchy in Nubia. And our Amenemope was an Idenu in Kash, so a deputy of Kash, which means that he was responsible for the administration of the more southern part of Nubia, which is Upper Nubia. And interestingly, this person, Amenemope, is also known from Soleb, even further south in Upper Nubia, where this person was buried. We thus know where he sort of lived, where he acted, and with this graffito here, we have a testament that he came to visit Elysia on official business or also to participate in the religious rituals that were performed in the chapel itself. During the long reign of Ramesses II, the Viceroy Setau paid a visit to the Elysia chapel as well. He came here possibly to restore the damage that was done to the reliefs and to the statues at the back in the Amarna period. Setau not only left a big commemorative stela at the outer facade that shows his king, Ramesses II, adoring Amun and the Horus of Miam, so two of the gods that were vener venerated in this chapel here. He also left these two, in fact, little scenes here below the original decoration. We see Setau here kneeling raising his arms in the gesture of adoration. And he adores all those deities that we see here and also um, adores all the um, deities that the Elysia Chapel is dedicated to. The secondary stela and graffiti provide a fascinating insight into the existence and life of a number of high-ranking people from nearby Aniba and of members of the pharaonic administration of Nubia. Although mostly short and rather laconic, they offer insights into the way how the Egyptians interacted with these spaces and with these places, such as Elysia.